All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to another masterclass here at Analytics. I hope we're excited that we are yet to learn a lot because we know that we are going to have a lot of fun, of course. Um, it's what I like to call TGIF. Of course, we know that TGIF means thank God it's Friday, all right? And your Friday just got better because you're here with us, okay? Because you decided to join the session. Today, we're going to be having a lot of communication, lots and lots of communication. And what I think communication is all about is I speak, you speak, we all speak, okay? So I'm not going to be the only one speaking. Of course, you might not be able to unmute and, you know, speak because we are a lot on the call, okay? Because definitely more people persons are going to be joining in in due time, all right? But the chat box is there for you to use, for you to send in your comments, send in your questions, and let's interact. So again, Today is all about going to be communication. I speak, you speak, we all speak, okay? The first thing we are going to talk about, first thing we are going to talk about, what is your ideal Friday? Your ideal Friday, what's your ideal Friday like? It could be, you know, Friday night. You know, what? What? how do you spend your Friday? All right, so maybe, okay, so let's say you go to work, then you're back from work. What's your ideal Friday night like? Okay, so let's send that to the chat box. Let's send that to the chat box. Like I said, like I said, communication. That's what we are doing today. We are, we are going, today we are parties. Okay, we are parties. I'm speaking, you're speaking. We are friends. Okay, today we, we are friends. <laughs> okay, so I would like to get your responses. What is how uh, what is your ideal Friday? What's your ideal Friday like? Okay, so she says listening to a live band. Tony says cooking for the weekend. So Tony's idea Friday is cooking for the weekend. Abdullah says spending time with family. Okay. Abdullah says spending time with family. What about the rest of us? Inkechi, what's your ideal Friday? What's your idea Friday? Okay. Uh, Abby, what's your ideal Friday? Ade Tutu, what's your ideal Friday? Aziz, what's your ideal Friday? Chidima, Adamilare, Henry, Jimmy, Magdalene, Olaita, Olawe Ranju, Sean, Sh uh, Shei. Shola, uh, Tululokbe, what, what's your ideal Friday like? So, Allah, why do you say preparing for work right now? Oh, <laughs> all right. Sorry about that, Allah, why do you? But don't worry, don't worry. So, I'm, I'm sure you still have a lot of time to, uh, you know, just relax, flex, and enjoy Friday, TGIF. That allows you say spending time with family. Okay, what about the rest of us? Uh, we, we don't, we or we don't have uh, an ideal Friday. Is that what we are saying? Like I mentioned earlier. It's communication. That's what this session is going to be all about, communication. There's nothing like, oh, I'm just here to listen. No. So I speak, you, you speak. Now, EK, um, you're, going to, you're going to be typing a lot. So anything you need, if maybe you need a cup of tea, you know, a cup of coffee, a cup of, um, you know, a glass of juice. All right. So you just bring, you know, take it close to your side. Just bring it. Uh, uh, might not be a cup of coffee though, because I think it's too late to take coffee, depending on your location, of course, and you know your time zone. But yeah, that's another thing. Okay, so whatever you need to relax, to listen, to communicate, get it. Okay, get it now. Sit back and and enjoy the session. Like I said, it's TGIF. Your Friday just got better because you're here, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at soon. Okay, as you say, is ready to relax. Um, so uh, a fantastic Friday for Aziz is to relax and personal development, you know, to grow. So Fridays are, are days for growth for Aziz. And Chidima says, resting after work and cooking. La cuisine, if you speak French, of course. All right, so resting after what? Work and cooking. That is Chidima's ideal Friday. <laughs> All right, so what is my ideal Friday like? My ideal Friday is making more friends. Because that's what the session is all about. Again, communication. That's what we are doing. So my ideal Friday is, you know, being in a session like this, an online session, and speaking to individuals, connecting, networking, getting to know more persons, getting to share ideas, getting to have fun, and getting to learn about tech. That's my ideal Friday. <laughs> okay, and of course, maybe party later. So maybe, you know, just... A party with family later, but anyways, that's that's it. All right, but let's go into what we actually have today. But let's go what we go into what we actually do have for today. All right. So, how can Power BI help you get a job? 
how can Power BI help you get a job? That's what we are going to be taking a look at today. And it's something of a mystery because this is, you know, it's you're wondering, Power BI gets me a job? How can how can Power BI get you a job? How can Power BI get you a job as a data analyst, HR analyst, financial analyst, or business analyst? Power BI, how? We take a look at that. Just hold on. All right. What we'll be doing today, we're going to be, um, you know, working on four things. The first is that we take a look at how Power BI can get you a job. Because, of course, we um, for some of us, we are looking to transition into tech. For some of us, what we do at the moment, we want to, you know, do something better. We want to move into a career path that we can see career growth. You want to be able to work at your own pace. You want to be able to have good work-life balance. You want to decide that, oh, today I want to go to bed. I'm, you know, I'm not going to work today. <laughs> All right. If you want to be a freelancer, of course, you want to be able to make good money to get not just your needs, but very, very important, your wants. Because we all want that Porsche. We all want that $1,000 uh, sneakers. And it's something we can get through tech. <laughs> Trust me. But yeah, so let's take a look at it. How can Power BI get you a job? That's the first thing. And then the second thing we'll take a look at is the pathway for you to become a data analyst, an HR analyst, a financial analyst, or a business analyst. We'll take a look at this four career paths today. And also the 10 analytics growth internship program and our special offer to you. That's what we are doing today. But of course, we need to begin with what is 10 analytics all about? Especially for those of us that this might be the first time we're just, you know, we're just joining the, uh, one of our master classes. You've never heard about 10 analytics. Oh, so maybe you saw 10 analytics on Instagram or you, you know, just, just browsing on your phone, you know, went on Google and you saw one of the publications because we have been in numerous publications. Uh, the world seen the efforts that we are putting into helping individuals transition into tech. And so we have been in multiple publications. And so maybe that's what you saw and you're like, oh, what is 10 analytics all about? What is 10 analytics? So 10 analytics is an ed tech company that helps Africans and the people of the black community transition into tech by lowering the tech barrier, the entry barrier. We took a look at current climbs. We took a look at the current situations, situation of things at the moment. You know, uh, uh, seeing that when you take a look at the tech industry, you usually don't have a lot of, uh, you usually don't have a lot of people, a lot of persons from the black community. Of course, you see the Asians, you see, you see all the races, you know, people from all the uh, climbs of life. You see them there, but you don't see so many black individuals. You don't see so many Africans. Okay, and that's something we were looking to change. That's something we are looking to change. And of course, we've been able to have a, consider a considerable achievement in that area, helping as many black persons transition into tech, helping as many people of the African community transition into tech, because that is what we are all about. Where you can see, you know, you have fantastic career growth. You can, you, you can, you can note that. Oh, from. Today, maybe in the next couple of years, I'm no longer going to be at this position. I'm going to be at this position. I'm going to be earning more. You know that you can build a career. And we offer eight programs currently. All right, so we offer eight programs currently, ranging from ranging from data analytics. Okay, so we have um, offer eight pro programs currently, ranging from data analytics to business analysis to data engineering, data science, financial analytics, HR analytics cyber security and um, strong. All right, so those are the eight programs we offer currently. And AI engineering, we are looking to bring that in, you know, in um, in the coming months, so do stay tuned. All right, and our facilitators are people that are, are experienced professionals, okay? People that have been able to work in the Fortune 500 companies. They have a lot of experience, diverse experience even from different industries. And so these guys are the ones that, you know, when you that take you through how you can actually transition into tech, take you through, oh, this is how you can actually learn the skills, teach you the skills, of course, that you do need to get a job. So you are going to be learning from an experiential side of things. All right. But that's something we take a look at later on. All right. That's what we offer here at Analytics. We help individuals transition into tech. 
offer eight programs and of course we have the we have up to date curriculum and top notch facilitators all right but really what about me who am i who is i to say because you know so someone has been speaking for a while and you're wondering who is that guy Okay, he never did introduce himself. He just, uh, just you know, started and started talking about TGIF. How do you expect me to listen to you talk about Tango that Friday when I don't even know who you have? Okay, so I'm Aisha Sir, Aisha Sagman Lahore, as you can see from the name tag by the left. All right, so you can see from the name tag. And um, um, a seasoned data professional, a seasoned technology prof um, professional, and I have experience in data analytics, in business analysis, power platform development, and more recently, predictive AI engineering. I'm the current uh, team lead in charge of the data analytics program, yet yeah, analytics, and I have experience in numerous sectors because I've been opportunity to work for organizations across Africa, Europe, and North America. All right, so I have experience in marketing and strategy in fintech and also as a power platform developer, just like I mentioned earlier. And I've also been able to train over 1,500 participants, professionals across four continents around the world, of course. <laughs> okay, so looking to start teaching people from other planets, you know, passing the good news of uh, good, passing the good news of tech. <laughs> All right, but yeah, as soon as um we discover that there's life on Mars, so we, I'll get into that. But yeah, so that's a little, that's a little about me. All right, now back to back to the main thing of the day. How can Power BI get me a job? How can Power BI get me a job? Before I even go into that, do we know what Power BI is all about? So if you know what Power BI is, just place a one, send a one to the chat box. Then if you don't send a zero, so one for yes, I know what Power BI is, zero for no, I don't know what Power BI is all about. Okay, so what, do we know what Power BI is? So uh, Bernard says one, Bernard knows, or like and doesn't, zero. Uh, Chidima knows, one. Tyra doesn't know, zero. Shola doesn't know, as he doesn't know, Tony, Tony knows. What about the rest of us? Do we know? Come on. Chop, chop, guys. Let's remember communication. I speak, you speak. We all speak. Okay. So I can see once, I can see zeros. It's fine. It's fine. We get into that. We see what Power BI is all about and how it can get you a job. Again, how can Power BI get me a job? First of all, what is Power BI? Power BI is a business intelligence tool that is used in analyzing data that it's used to ensure that your business is, is intelligent. From the name Power BI, Powerful Business Intelligence, as we like to call it, okay? So it's you trying to make your business intelligent by you using the tool to, organ to analyze business data to make data-driven decisions. And how can Power BI get you a job? In the current times, gone are the days that companies uh, made decisions based on notion. Gone are the days that companies did things at the spur of the moment. Oh, so I feel like uh, we should no longer sell five products. Let's go ahead and sell four products. Oh, I feel like um, we should increase the price of our items. Oh, maybe today, you know, I'm just feeling that. Um, why don't we reduce the price instead of, you know, uh, selling the item for uh, that particular product, you know, that product we sell, instead of selling that item for $5, so maybe we can reduce that to $4.25, um, uh, $4 two cents, okay? So that's something that, you know, I think we should do. Gone are the days that companies make decisions in that lackadaisical manner. Now, organizations use data. In the current century, data has only grown. Previously, we used to have data, you know, um, data being stored in your books. So for every sale you make, you take your pen and, you know, you record it on your on your, uh, um, your sales book. Go on at those days. No, no one does that anymore. Data is now bigger. That's why we have big data. That's something that, you know, might be a bit strange to some of us, but you could look that up later. You know, at the end of the session, you can go ahead and take a look at what big data, big data, okay? Big data is all about. All right. So companies are now more reliant on data. Data has been generated so much per second. You, you have thousands and thousands and thousands of data being generated per second by companies. 
And now, industries, firms, organizations do not do anything, do not make any meaningful decision without taking a look at data, first of all. There's this phrase or a sentence, okay? So I don't think it's a phrase. So, you know, the English language is strange, but I think it's, it's, a, it's a sentence, not a phrase, <laughs> okay? So there's a sentence that says, if we have data, let's look at data. And if all we have are opinions, then let's go with mine. I repeat that, okay? If we have data, let's look at data. But if all we have are opinions, let's go with mine. What that is saying is that for an organization to make a concrete decision, for a firm to know that this is right, there has to be data. If not, you could be right. That other individual could be right. Anyone can be right. And that is not usually the case. Someone is usually wrong. There's, most times, there's usually just one truth. The truth is communicated. Um, the truth can be found from data. That is where Power BI comes in. Because organizations are now more reliant on data more than ever, they need someone with Power BI expertise. They need someone that can go ahead and analyze data. They need someone that can get data-driven uh, insights to help the, the company make data-driven decisions. They need someone that can take a look at data and not opinions. Power BI. All right, so today we are going to take a look at how to use Power BI so you can get a job with the, uh, so you can get a job in tech due to the fact that you actually do know how to use Power BI. So we're going to take a look at how we can use Power BI to solve a business problem. We are going to be solving a business problem on this call. A problem that will make an organization employ you a problem that many organizations have and they want someone to solve. We are going to take a look at that. And the problem that we are going to be taking a look at, the problem we are going to be working on is that we have a scenario, okay? We have a scenario, uh, an hypothetical scenario now, okay? Based on real life data, okay? So the scenario says that we have a company that, have, you know, they have a chain of retail stores, and the channel of retail stores, that means they have, you know, different stores everywhere. So they have a store there, they have a store here. If you go out now, you know, you just open your, your, your drapes. Okay. So just take a look at, uh, just take a look at the other side of the street. And then you see that this company actually now has a store just directly opposite your house. I know it's strange. You might be like, but I've never seen that store. What are you talking about, Aisha, sir? It's there. Just, if you can't find it, you did not look well. All right. So. If you can't find it, you did not look well. So just take a look at it again. And you'd see that this company that's currently nameless already has a store in front of your building, in front of your home, because they do have chain of retail stores. Now, because this organization or this company, they have a lot of uh, branches, they have a lot of stores, they, are, they generate data, a lot of data. And... That the data that they currently have, it captures the dates, that's the data transaction or card, the customer, that's the customer ID, the ID of the customer that actually went ahead to carry out that transaction, okay? It contains the gender of the customer, the age category, the product category, the quantity, the price per unit, the total amount. These are some of the, these are some of the columns that we are going to see in the data set that we would be working with. And this is what our, is our objective, what we are looking to achieve. We are looking to identify customer preferences. What do customers like? Because this company is looking to increase their revenue. And for you as an organization to increase revenue, especially when you deal in retail, you want to know what do customers like purchasing? What is that item that is currently trending? 
what is that item that if I'm going to go ahead to restock, it's going to sell out so fast? Understanding what customers like. We also want to take a look at our total revenue. No our current gauge. Oh, so are we making a lot? Are we below what we do expect what we expected to make you know at this time are we below um uh goal for the year or are we above and we also want to take a look at our sales trends to identify where we had peaks and lows in terms of sales the period that we had high sales the period we had low sales all of those things will help this company to be able to go ahead and make a decision on how to improve sales I make more money, of course, as an organization, okay? Because you want to make money, yeah. So, so, that, so that's the end goal. That's what we are looking to do. And the data said that we are going to be working with, can be gotten, yeah? So uh, you are going to get the slides and you'll be able to click on that link to download the data set. And I also just sent the link to the data set on the uh, chat box so you can also get it from that uh, from that link. Okay. So just click on that to download the data set. So you can practice along if, you know, you'll be able to follow through or you would also get the recording of the session. As long as you fill in the form, the attendance form, and that you still to the end of the session, you would also get the link to the recording, the materials, all of that. So you can practice in your own time. Okay. But if you can follow along, please go ahead and, down, and um, you know, download the data set. I just sent the link to the chat box. All right, now the data set looks like this. This is what the data set contains. This is what we are working with. If you do go ahead to click on that link, if you do go ahead to download the data set, this is what you are expecting. To get Power BI, the, um, we are going to be working with Power BI Desktop today and Power BI Desktop is a free tool. So you can download this Power BI Desktop from the web. All right, so that is a free tool. All right, so this is the this is what the data set looks like. This is the data set that we are going to be working on today. And we are going to convert this data set into this report. We are going to be converting this data set into this dashboard. But fun fact, when you build a dashboard on Power BI desktop, it's called the report. The dashboard is built in Power BI service. But like I said, that's fun fact, nothing to worry about. So we could call it a report, we could call it a dashboard. Uh, any of them flies. I think it's just semantics. Okay. So this, we are looking to transform this into this. Amazing, right? All right. So this would help the organization make, uh, get insights. Oh, this is, uh, this is the total amount of uh, items that this is the most popular, uh, you know, the most popular product category, the product category that uh, customers now like getting customers not now like purchasing this is our customer age distribution you know this is our sales strength this is the total amount all of those things would help the company make a decision so we are building a report that tells a story we are building a report that would help move that organization forward let's get into it okay so we are going to be working on Power BI. Now, like I mentioned, if you have Power BI installed already on your PC, you can go ahead to download uh, the data set and try to follow along. If not, don't fret, okay? You're good, you're fine. All you need to do, just listen in. Ensure you fill in the attendance form and that you stay till the end of the session so you get access to the recording, the slides, all of the materials that will be used in the session, all right? So you can practice on your own time. Learn about Power BI so you can get a job. <laughs> okay. Now, when working with Power Business Intelligence, when working with Powerful Business Intelligence, you usually begin with what we call the ETL, the Extract, the Transform, and the Load, because you need to get your data from a data source, and then you can transform the data if you want, Oh, so I don't like what all the data is looking. I would like the data to uh so let's say, let's say as a kid, maybe you were okay, well, maybe not as a kid now. Well, yeah, let's just say you were given a choice to choose a gift. So let's say it's a birthday or it's a celebration or something, and you were given a choice and you're given a horse, and you're like, no, I don't want a horse, I want a cat. 
All right, so I don't want a horse, I want a cat. Then you change the horse to a cat. That's what transformation is all about. All right, so E, extract means for you to get access to the data, get the data from the data source. Then transform means for you to convert the data from the format it's currently in that you probably do not want into what you want and what you desire. Just like the way you transform a horse to a rabbit or a rabbit to a cat, or, you know, you say you don't want this, you want something else. That's what transformation is all about. And then, of course, load, which means for you to load the data into Power BI Desktop. We are going to be focusing on extract and load, okay? Because the data is fine. The data is currently a horse, and we want a horse on sugar, all right? <laughs> okay, so the, the data is currently a horse, and we want a horse, and that's what we are going to be speak, um, sticking with, okay? So, first and first, to... Uh, first and first, to extract the data. So I'm going to come over to where I have get data. Just try to, uh, so let me try to bring this to the bottom. All right, so it's, okay. Great. So I'm first of all going to connect to my data source. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and click on get data. I will select get data, and then you see I have Excel workbook. I'm going to select Excel workbook because my data source is an Excel file. All right, my data, if you have downloaded the data set, you'll notice it's an Excel file. And so I'm going to select Excel because that is where my data is coming from. So I'll go ahead and select Excel workbook. And then my uh, and then my uh, my uh, folder opens up. All right, and then I, I will locate wherever the data set is located. That's where I downloaded and store the data set. So if you downloaded it, it's probably going to be in your downloads folder. If not, whatever folder is located, is located in your desktop, in your document, you know, just go over there and find the folder. Okay. So for me, uh, this should be my document. So I'm just going to scroll all the way down. So yes, the data, beauty sales data set. Okay. Beauty sales data set. So I'm going to go ahead, click on that, and then I'll select open. Open sesame. All right. So uh, wait for that to connect. All right, and it opens up in the navigator. I like to call the nav navigator a Power BI Force Cloud. It's it's not it's not an official name yet. All right, but I do plan on writing uh, a letter to Microsoft because Microsoft they are the ones that actually develop Power BI. It went from the name Microsoft Power BI. Okay, so I plan on sending a letter over to Microsoft to get them to change the name from Navigator to Power BI Force Cloud. It's currently called Navigator, but I like to think of it as a Force Cloud. Okay, Force Cloud. <laughs> All right, don't ask me. I came up with the name. Um, that's something. We talk about we um take a look at some other time, but yeah. So this is the navigator. Yeah, I have my data sets in the false cloud. It is not in Power BI yet. It's just somewhere you know somewhere in the cloud for me to take a look at. So I can click on the beauty sales data set. I can select this. I'll just click on this checkbox, and then I get to see what the data set looks like, and I can just have a sneak peek, you know, like a preview. I can go ahead to transform the data if I do want to transform the data. Like I said, if the data set you were given is a horse and you don't want a horse, you want something else, you can go ahead to transform your data. In practical sense, what I actually mean by that is if your data is, maybe your data is dirty, you want to carry out data cleaning, you want to carry out data filtering, data enrichment, data validation, you want to, you know, do just maybe the data set is not, it's not ready for analysis. Then you can go ahead to select transform data, which will take you over to Power Query. We are not doing that. We like our horse just the way it is. So we are going to go ahead to load directly. So I'll click on load. I click on load. And um, so it's going to be loaded in now. Just a moment. Okay, so the data set is loading. All right, and it has been loaded. Okay, 
So one way to know your data set has you know, been successfully loaded is that at the right, you'd see your data panel, and then you see the table you just loaded in. And if I click on the drop down, I get to see all of the different columns in the retail sales data set, which I just loaded in. And also at this point, I get to see build visuals with your data. Okay, build visuals with your data. So I know, wow, I'm good to go. And I can go ahead to begin analyzing my data. Okay, now, before I go ahead to build my report, there's something I like to do. And that is, I like to style the dashboard or the report now. All right, I like to style it, you know, just insert some shapes, make it look nice, make it look aesthetically pleasing, pleasing to the eyes. When you see it, you're like, oh, wow, how did you do this? I want to, you know, you, you, um, you want to learn more. Something worthy of placing in a portfolio because you want to ensure you have a portfolio if you want to get a new job. But, you know, we'll get into that, all right? Just stay put, okay? I'll get into that. But yeah. So I'm going to insert a shape. I'm going to come over to where I have my insert re ribbon. So you see at the top, I have my different ribbons. I have the home, the insert, the modeling, the view, the optimize, the help. So I'm going to go ahead and select insert. And then over here, you see I have shapes. I'm going to select shapes and select rectangle. Why am I doing this? Just to make the dashboard look nice. It's not like, oh, it is necessary. Like, oh, if I don't go ahead to insert the shapes, then the entire report is null and void. Oh, that means, oh, I just said the report that you built is wrong. You know, it's not correct. Oh, it's not, it's not worthy of evaluation. All right, no, it's just to make it look nice, appealing. That's the reason I have the shapes in there. Okay, so I'll go ahead and then I would insert the shapes, uh, which I've done already, of course. Uh, the rectangle and I'll just style this. So I'll drag this to the edge, you know, just serving as a design. Okay. I have my rectangle in here. I'm going to go ahead to change the color of the rectangle because it's currently sky blue. I don't want sky blue. I want something else. So I'll click on the rectangle and then I'll come over to format shape. And over here, I have my style. I'll click on the drop down for the style. This is the color, I can click on that, and then I will change, I'm going to select this, you know, this kind of blue. This is like a viral blue now, I think. Apparently I will ink blue. I had there are lots of kind, there are different kinds of colors. I'm only familiar with the seven colors of the rainbow, you know, which we all know. But I heard now that there are so many colors, you know, you have different grades of pink. You have different grades of, you have, uh, uh, <laughs> okay, anyways. That's uh, I'm, I'm, that's not something to go into, but I'm usually confused. So I'll just stick with, you know, blue. So I change the color to blue. So whatever kind, what kind of blue this is, um, you, you know, I, I don't. All right, so this is the blue. Now, I have this. We need to solve a problem. We need to ensure that we do get, we do achieve the objectives of the company, which is to understand the customer preference, the total revenue, the sales trend, to help the organization increase revenue to help the organization make fantastic decisions. I'm going to start with trying to identify the age category of customers within the organization. So we know the people that patronize the company the most. Oh, our, the, our audience, our audience to us, the Gen Z, is it the Gen X, is it the millennials, is it the boomers? Who are the people, what's, what's the age range, what's the age category of our customers? So we know where we can focus our efforts on. Oh, it seems we are more appealing to the younger audience, so we know what to do. Or it seems we are more appealing to the older audience, we know what to do. Get an insight. For this, I'm going to go with the plain old column chart. So I'm going to select the stacked column chart. So I'm going to use the stacked column chart. So I'll insert the, start, uh, the stacked column chart, okay? And I'll just resize and bring this over here. I'll bring this over here. Maybe I can reduce my rectangle a bit. Okay, so I'll bring this over here. And now go ahead to populate my visual. Okay, so I'm going to place the age category on the x axis, 
And then I will place the total amount that's from the data panel. I'll drag total amount to y axis. That means I want to see the age category that spends the most with the organization. Where do we get the most revenue? Okay. And from this, we can see that millennials actually patronize the company the most. We can see millennials actually patronize the company the most. Easy. Without analyzing data, we would not be able to tell this. We wouldn't be able to tell this. We wouldn't be able to know that this is actually the case. We might think that, oh, we are more appealing to the younger audience and start placing initiatives on, you know, for the younger audience. And that is not the case. We are going to be expecting a positive result, and that won't be the case because we are going based on opinions and not based on what the data says. If we are together, send the one to, um, to the chat box. All right. If you know we are to, if you know you are with me, send the one to the chat box. And I also want you to tell me, send in two colors. You know, two different kind of colors. Aside the seven, you know, the seven colors that we are all familiar with. So, you know, blue, you know, blue, you know, red, you know, you know, all of those colors, you know, those strange, strange colors. I think there's one called, uh, uh, is it lilac now? Or is it, is it lilac a color or is it bogus? Or, you know, I, I'm, 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 okay. So I can see one, one, one. I can see a lot of ones, meaning we are following. And then I can see, um, so Amy Tan says baby pink. Are you kidding me? Baby pink? baby pink and custard yellow those are colors now <laughs> wow <laughs> okay <laughs> so uche says burgundy i tell you says burgundy as well i think i've heard about burgundy i think it's it looks like red you know a bit of red um uh, i think I, I might be wrong now <laughs> okay uh aduke says cream and beige beige is beige a color beige what kind of color is beige does it look like brown does it look like white Bennett says turquoise. I thought turquoise is a kind of um a kind of um you know maybe some some kind of material. It's a color, really. Wow. There's even on onion onion color on. <laughs> even now vegetables are now they now even have their own kind of their own kind of colors. So we have onion colors. We have, Chuk says milk milk. milk. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck says milky do not color. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. <laughs> we, can, we get we get back to that. Okay. So we get back to that. So 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 you see, so I'm not the only one in, in this um, dilemma. Okay. So there are so many colors now. We can't we can't keep track. We can't keep track. Okay. <laughs> but let's move on. Let's move on. So at this point, we've been able to ensure that the visual, uh, we've been able to make the visual show us information for our age category. So now the company can know the age range that they appeal the most to. Okay, that they appeal the most to. Fantastic. Nice. Good to go. Now I'm going to style this. I'm going to style this particular visual. All right. So it looks a whole lot nicer. So I'm going to click on this. I'm just going to click on the visual on the column chart. I'll come over to my visualizations and click on format your visual. And then I have the visual and the general. Uh, select general. And so the first thing I want to do, I want to change the colors of the bars from sky blue to this kind of blue, whatever color this is, or this is okay? I'm going to change this to this kind of blue. So I'll come over to uh, the visual, not the general for now. So I'll stick to um, the visual for now. And I'll scroll down to columns and the color is currently blue. I'm going to change the color to this, you know, the same, the same, you know, for it to have this, uh, something similar to what the background had and to what the rectangle had. And one thing that we, we follow that you also want to ensure you follow when working with uh, reports, when working with dashboard is that you want to follow that principle that says less is more. The lesser items in your visual, the more, 
appealing it is, the more it makes sense. You don't want to just have so much information in there that's not difficult for you to understand what the visual is saying. That's difficult for the stakeholders that you're going to be presenting this to to understand what the visual is saying. So I'm going to go ahead and take off the grid line. So I'll just click on this, take off the grid line. So I have, you know, I don't have those lines in there. And then I would also take off the titles for the X axis and the Y axis. Okay, and I have something like this. All right, I want to give this a border because at the moment you really can't tell where this ends. So I'll click on that again, come back to my uh, format visuals, click general, I'll select effects and then the visual border. I'm going to turn the visual border on. Again, don't worry. So in case if you're not able to follow, if you can follow, please do so, okay? But in case if you're not able to follow, just know that um, you get the recording and the materials as long as you fill the attendance form and that you still till the end of the session, okay? So I'm going to change the color. Um, maybe I can make the color, I think, you, you know, still using the same blue. And I'll just make the rounded corner seven pixels. So we have something like this, okay? Uh, I think this looks good, okay? So we are now going to go ahead. Maybe I make this bigger, a bit just... No? Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and move to the next thing, the next tax. We've been able to tell the age category within the organization based on the customers, of course. We also would want to be able to identify the products that are purchased the most by these customers. That is, to know if, to know the products that customers like purchasing from us. So we know if to double down on that, double down on that particular product, or maybe we, we try to do whatever it is that we are doing right for this product. We try to take that, you know, take that, um, take that initiative and apply it to the other products that might not be doing so well. Okay, so we are able to increase revenue in the other for the other products that might not be doing so well. Example: So let's say your company sells bicycles and cars. Okay, your company sells bicycles and cars. Now, the bicycles, let's say the company, um, you sell more bicycles than cars. So maybe, of course, you also need to take a look at all that data, take a look at the uh, what the uh, what the environment looks like. That's the uh, the market, the customer, the, yeah, the market, basically. You also want to take into, you know, take some, take a look at that for you to, for that make, uh, make a decision based on what you analyze, okay? But let's say you do sell more bicycles than cars, then maybe you want to try to find out, oh, are we advertising bicycles more than cars? So maybe we want to increase the number of um, um the advertisement for cars to get more people to buy cars. Or maybe we might want to just uh forgo selling cars and just focus on bicycles. So we save costs, save on cost, and of course, increase profits because... When you reduce cost, you do increase profit, you know. So that will now be a decision for the organization to take. So, but enough talk. Let's go into this. Let's see what product is actually purchased the most within this organization. So instead of inserting visuals over and over again and and um, having to style over and over again, I'm just going to copy this particular visual by using Control C and then Control V to paste. And I'll bring that over here. Okay. And then... I'm going to change this to a bar chart. So I want to use a bar chart this time. And I'll take off the former fields that are placed on the x-axis and the y-axis. And this time, I'm going to move the product category. I'm going to move the product category down to the y-axis. And then I'll move the total amount down to the x-axis. All right? And then with this, I can tell the, the uh, products that are purchased um, that bring in the most revenue. I could also decide, oh, instead of taking a look at revenue, why don't I take a look at the products that are sold the most? That's the product that have the highest, quant and they have the highest quantity in terms of numbers, of course. So I can bring quantity down to X as is, and then you see, I have clothing, electronics, and beauty. So clothing currently takes the cake. So it seems we sell more of clothing than electronics, although... The disparity is not so large. So, you know, you could say that each and every one of our products are doing fine, okay? But still, 
could we sell more of clothing than electronics and then beauty items? Okay, so that is it. Easy. Helping the company get insights. So with this, the company can go ahead to make a decision. Should we add in more products? So it seems up the two products that we are currently, the two product categories we currently do sell are doing well. Should we add in more products or should we take out beauty, the beauty items and all of that? Another thing I want us to do is to take a look at, we also want to take a look at the gender distribution. So who purchases items from us the most? Is it the males or is it the females? Okay, so what is our customer base like in terms of gender? Based on these two things we have, you see that, you know, we have more of millennials that purchase from us. And we have more of clothing items that are being purchased. Who do you think would be, which, uh, so who, what, what category do you think is going to be, um, uh, what category, so between the males and the females, so what, what's, uh, so what do you think is going to be purchasing from us the most? You know, just a quick guess, let, and then we see what the data says. Just a quick guess. So Azuki K says females. So Chuk says females. Okay, so I think because because of the clothing. <laughs> okay, so uh, Ghanaian says females as well. Okay, so Ghanaian says females as well. Anything says males. So anything sort of the contrary, so contrary opinion, they say is that is the males. P says males, actually. So maybe because of the electronics in there, okay, maybe because of the electronics in there, or maybe it's because the reason why we are saying females, let's also take a look at those in, you know, the millennials for the elderly, is a male or a female most likely going to purchase an item? So who goes out, who goes ahead to make purchases for the elderly? Okay, but let's, let's see what the data says. Remember, if we have data, let's look at data. And if all we have are opinions, then let's go with mine. We have data. So let's look at data. So at this point, I'm going to copy this and paste again. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to be using the donut chart now because the donut chart is donut chart and pie chart. They are best used when you're trying to show ratio, when you're trying to show percentages, how a certain category differs from another. So I'm going to go ahead and change this, this uh, to my donut chart. And I would also take off all of these items. Now, I'm going to go ahead and populate by dragging gender to the legend and then also drag gender to values because I want to count gender. So how many males and how many females. And from the data, the data is telling us that there's really no difference. Of course, the females, you know, edge over the male a little, but there's no difference. So guys, everyone, because I, of course, I know that we are friends. At the start of the session, we established that, you know, we are friends. So TGIF, I mentioned that today, your Friday just got better because you joined the session, okay? So, so, so guys, take a look at this. Do you see the reason why data is needed? Okay, so Chuk says one percent is a difference, okay? But this is the reason why data is needed. Because if we were to go on the placid value, um, you know, the placid scale, the, just oh, what's, what do you think? You say, oh, males, you say females. But that's not what the data is telling us. The data is saying that there is no difference. And so we are appealing to the female audience and to the male audience equally. It will be unwise to try start, um, to begin. It will be unwise for the organization to begin investing resources in trying to boost females when they think that uh, when uh, in trying to boost females when they uh, may as in trying to boost the females or make the males any of them based on the fact that they think that they are, they don't have enough of that particular gender purchase item from them. Data is very, very necessary. Oh, peace. So uh, happy birthday to you, peace. Okay. It's your bed. I'm, I'm glad you're happy to join the session. Okay. I'm glad I'm glad that the, you know the session is actually uh, so the, the session is so nice that if you feel it's a bed the gift from me to you. Okay. So uh, happy birthday, peace. So today's peace birthday, everyone. All right. So happy birthday to you, peace. Okay. So, so moving on. Now. I'm going to go ahead to style the slices. I'm going to go ahead to style 
the slices because you see the slices are a bit different the uh from the from the bar as i have in the other charts so i'm going to come over to my visualizations you know expand the slices the females i can make the females uh you know this uh dark blue and then for this i could go with a lighter purple okay I'm going to take off the legend because I'm going to be using labels instead. So when you have labels, you don't really need the legend. All right. So I'll use the legend and I'll change the legend, the label content down to uh category and percent of total. So we can see the category and the percentage. Okay. So we've been able to get that done. We are going to be moving on. We've been able to see customer preferences. We've been able to understand the customer distribution within the organization. Now, let's take a look at sales trend. Let's understand the sales trend of the, the, um, the sales trend of the business. Again, don't forget, what we are trying to do here is to see how Power BI can get you a job. And I'm sure you're already understanding why it is important for analytics to be part of a business. Now, we want to take a look at the sales trend. We want to know which months did we make a, did we make a lot of sales? Which months did we sell a lot, um, you know, lots and lots of items, a plethora of items? Which months did we sell you know, so much? And which months did we have a dip? So we could take a look at maybe we made high sales in January and then we made low sales in February. We could take a look at what we did right in January and then try to replicate that for the month of February. Understanding the data. Now, I'm going to be using the line chart. Okay, I'm going to be working with the line chart. The line chart is, is um, best used to talk about trends. All right, so I will be working with the line charts. Okay. So I'll uh, just uh, try to get all of this down a bit. Okay. Now, for the line charts, um, so instead of doing that, I'm just going to copy this. So I have all my formats available. I'll uh, just bring this to this point. Okay. And I'll change this to the line chart. I'll take all of this off now i want to see the change i want to see the change of amounts that's the change of quantity based on months to identify the months that we have made high sales for those of us that you know we are entrepreneurs so, so we uh we, we uh you know uh we have our own business we have our own organization this is something you can also implement in your own day-to-day -day life okay this is something you can also do so i'm going to drag quantity i'm going to drag quantity down to the uh down to the y axis and then i'm going to place the so the dates i'm going to place dates on the x axis all right i'm going to take off the year the quarter and the day because i'm only interested on the month and with this we can see the trend we can see the sales trend we can see that in january so we had peak sales in may so in January, we did not really do so well in the amount of items we sold, just 399. We had the rise in February, a dip in March. Then we had a rise in April and some even more rise in what? May. And then a dip and all of that. So we could try to find out why did we get this rise in May? And how can we replicate this for each and every one of the months to ensure that we have fantastic sales throughout the year and not just for a single month how all right so of course we might need to take a look at more data for that because one thing about data is that when you go ahead to get answers to your questions they usually lead to more questions so now that we've been able to identify the sales trend what did we, we what did we really do in the month of february what did we really do in the month of march what did we what did we really do in the month of may all right so we might need to take a look at so some closer look at the data to understand what we really did in each and every one of these months to try to replicate for that month to make fantastic sales. Okay, so now, but for what we have at the moment, I'm just going to go ahead and change, you know, style this, make it look a whole lot better. So I'm going to come over to the X as is, okay? Oh, 
Okay, so I'm just going to change the line. So I'll change the, the I'm going to make this smooth, a smooth kind of um, line. So I'm going to select the interpolation type and select smooth. So we have something like this, you know, wavy lines. And I'll also change the color. Okay, and we have this. It's taking shape, shape already. Now, as someone that has Power BI skills, you also want to be able to have fantastic presentation skills. Because as a data analyst, as a business analyst, as an HR analyst, as a financial analyst, you want to be able to present all of those things in, you know, during your state, when you have, um, you know, like things like the stakeholder meetings, when you've been told that, oh, so we're having a board meeting, you know, on Friday, and we need you to take a look at data and tell us new ways that we can make improvements in the business and all of that. You want to have a fantastic dashboard, a fantastic presentation, and you also want to have KPIs within your dashboard. What are KPIs? Key performance indicators. There are ways that there are, you know, there are visuals that as soon as you just take a look at it, you have a good idea of what is occurring within the organization. KPIs are quantifiable measures. They are things you can count one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So it needs to be quantifiable for it to be termed a KPI. Examples of KPIs are the total the total revenue, the total quantity, the total um, um uh customers. So once you just take a look at the report, once you just take a look at the dashboard, you're able to tell, oh, this is the amount of money that we made. These are the amount of customers that we have. These are the number of items that we've sold. KPIs in your dashboard. A way to insert this, okay, is by in, is by using the um uh, is by using the uh you know the card visual, all right? So over here you see we have a lot, you know, we have lots and lots of visualizations, and then I have the card visual. So I'm going to select the card visual. But before I do that, I'm also going to style this. Okay. So I'm going to insert another shape. I'm going to go with the uh I'm going to go with the uh rounded rectangle. Okay, just something nice. Uh bring this down. Okay, I'll change this to white. Okay, and I can also change the border. All right, so I'll bring this over here. That's my card visual. And for the fields, I'm going to drag the amount because I want to I want to have a KPI for revenue. I want to have what a KPI for revenue. So I'm going to go ahead and drag total amount towards fields. All right, and then with this, you can see the total amount we have. 456,000. That is the, uh, that's the revenue we made. So I'm going to just, you know, style these a bit, just arrange this and show it looks nice. Uh, I would change the, I would you know, change the background. So I'll come over to effects, change the color to uh, something darker. And then I don't need a category label. So I'm going to turn that off. For the colored value, I'll make this white. Okay, I'll make that white. And then I would also try to reduce the uh the font size to let's say 35. Okay, so uh just a moment. So it seems my uh my shape is actually on top of my card visual. So I'll just send that backward. Okay, great. Now I'm going to go ahead to just make the corners rounded the beats. So I come over to effects. Now you might be wondering why why do this? Because like I mentioned, you also want to be able to have good presentation skills, and you want to ensure that your dashboard, your report is pleasing to the eyes. That when stakeholders take a look at this, they want to listen to what you have to say. I know that they take a look at it and they're wondering what is this? Are you even prepared for the meeting today? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make the corners rounded. Just give this, uh, let's say, seven pixels. And we have something like this. Okay, and then I would also give this a title. So I'll come over to general. I'll turn on the title. I'll call these total revenue. So I'll say total revenue. 
okay? Total revenue, and I would make these, <clears throat> sorry, I'll make this right. And I'll just center the value. Okay, so I have my first KPI. I have my first KPI. I can see the total revenue. Now I'm going to copy this. I need, I'm going to insert two more KPIs. One would be for the quantity, and then the order would be for the uh, number of customers we have. So I'm just going to resize this a bit. So we have enough space for the others. Okay. Okay. And then for this, that's for the second KPI, the second card visual. I'll take off some total amounts and then I'll move quantity in there. So I get the total number of items that we sold and we can see it's 2,514. And I would change the title. So this would no longer be total revenue, but of course, total quantity. And then for the last KPI, this would be number of customers. So I'm going to drag customer ID to the fields. So we have um, the total number of customers. It's currently showing me the first customer ID. I'll click on this drop down and change that to accounts. So I have a thousand. So I have 1000 customers. And then I can also change the title to number of customers. All right. So a dashboard is, it's, it's almost complete. It's almost complete. Now, one other thing we'd want to do is to insert a slicer. Slicers are used to tell a story. Let's say while you were analyzing the data, you noticed something for the electronic products, that's for the um, electronic products category. And you like to show that during your presentation. You like to ensure that you, you place a, you know, what you call uh, your, your lens, so the, uh, your magnifying lens. So you want to place a magnifying lens above your electronic product category. You will need a slicer for that because the slicer will filter the entire dashboard and show you information for the category that you selected. So slicers are basically filters. They are filters used in filtering your entire report, your entire dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead to insert a slicer and I'll just bring this over here. So I'm going to, I want to filter the dashboard based on the product category. All right. And I can just change the slicer setting from vertical list to let's say drop down or tau. I think tau would be better. And then I'll just resize. Okay. And I'll bring this here. So if I go ahead to click on beauty now, the entire report, the entire report will be filtered and would show me information for just beauty items. All right, it will show me information for just what beauty items. So at this point, you can see the total revenue we made for what beauty items. You can see the total quantity we made we sold for beauty items as um, products within the beauty category. You can see the total number of customers that purchased what beauty items. And I can do the same for different categories. I can do the same for clothing. I can click on clothing and you see the total revenue, the total quantity, the number of customers. And you also see the, the trends. That's the sales trend for what? Clothing. You see that we had um, peak sales for clothing in March. Remember, we, we, had, we had peak sales in May. We had what? Peak sales in May. But for clothing alone, we sold more clothes, not in May, but in March. So you see the power of slicers. So the fact that you can see from this point that we made more sales in May, you might think, oh, so oh, if you're asked, when was the time that we sold more clothes? Oh, it's May, it's May, because you know, we from the data, the data is showing us that we actually did make, make more sales in May. But that is really not the case because what the data is showing us right now, what the visual is showing us right now is information for each and every one of the categories. So if you want to see specific information per category, this is why the slicer comes in. 
And of course, I can also select electronics. And you see for electronics, we actually sold more of electronics in May. So we sold 97 electronics in May. And we had a dip in March. Unlike clothing, that we sold, sold more clothing in March. So take a look at this. This is March for clothing. It's high. For electronics, it's like it's the lowest. So maybe for the March, for the month of March, we focus all of our, all of our ID, you know, all it was all systems, all systems go for clothing. All right. So I, I don't know. So is there anything that is celebrated in March that makes people buy more clothes? Okay. So, but it seems that we ju we're just selling clothes, you know, all our advanced placements were clothes. Maybe like we, we didn't sell any electronics and all of that. All right, so that's what the data is telling us. So that is why slices are important. They help you to navigate your presentation when you are speaking with the stakeholders. To talk about different, um, so, so take a look at this, take a look at this. Like I mentioned, placing the mag a magnifying glass above certain items. Now I'm going to style this because this does not really blend well with the rest of my visuals. I'm going to make it look a whole lot more nicer. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. It's selected, of course. And I'll come over to the general. And then I would, in I have effects. I'm going to turn off the background. Okay, and then I'll come back to my visual border. I'm going to turn on visual border. I'll make the border white. And I'll make the seven pixels as well. I'll come back to the visual. And then over here, you see I have slicer and a, uh, I'll make the slicer in the white so I get to see what's written in there. Okay, I can increase the fonts. Uh, so maybe I can just try reducing this a bit. Okay, and then the values, I'll change the background for the values to a special kind of blue. Okay, and then the border, I'll make this white. And I'll also make the values white. Okay, and then we have something like this. So with this, I can it's, it still works. I can click on this, you know, to see different uh, parts of the of the data. All right. So now that we've been able to get that done, one last thing, one last thing is that you want to give your dashboard a name. You want to ensure that your you that your dashboard that oh, so I'm just taking a look at this. I want to know what your dashboard is talking about. At the moment, no, an outsider would know, okay? Except if they take a bit of time to take a look at each and every one of the visuals. But you know, of course, because we've been in the call, you know, right from the start, we built this together. But you want to give your dashboard a tie to. So your dashboard is clear. Oh, I just take a look at the name of the dashboard. I'm able to tell. This is what the dashboard is talking about. This is what the dashboard contains. I'm going to use a text box to... Uh, to give my dashboard a name. So I click on text box and then I have text box, text box pops up. Okay, and then I can change these to, uh, I'm going to make this 40, that's the font size, for it to be big, nice and legible. And I would go ahead and type in sales dashboard. So this is going to be sales. Okay, so no, <laughs> sorry. This is going to be sales dashboard. And I can increase this and just, okay, so I'll drag this to the edge and I will take off the white background. So I'll come over to format text box and turn off the background. And then I can highlight this and make this white. So it's more clear. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our dashboard. This is a very, very simple report. This report is going into the insights of the company, solving a problem, helping to guide the organization to make a decision. How can Power BI get me a job? This is one of the ways, people. Okay, so when you have good knowledge of Power BI, when you have Power BI is a whole lot. So we just we just took a look at one aspect of Power BI. There's also the Power BI service, which you then um, take a look at when you're trying to distribute this report to different parts of the organization. 
Okay, there are other uh, for that you would need to carry out what you call you know your publishing, uh, where you, uh, whereby you deploy, you publish, you share on your Power BI workspace, a whole lot more on what Power BI is all about. Okay, but this is one of the ways Power BI can get you a job. Again, companies are more reliant on data ever more uh, more than ever before. Companies are more reliant on data more than ever before. So you have having good idea, you having the necessary skills, you having the wherewithal to be able to analyze data, not just analyze data, be able to get insight from the data, not just able to get insights from the data, but be able to communicate this insight when you're giving your presentations, when you're speaking to the stakeholders, would help in your chance, would um, drastically, I don't think drastically is the word now, all right, so drastically increase. So I don't think it's drastically increased. Drastically is used, you know, for when you want to reduce an item. Okay, so it would help to increase your chance of you getting a job tremendously. That's the word. Okay, but really, what's what else? Because the knowledge of Power BI is fantastic, but you need other things. Because you might be wondering, oh, I should say you're just pulling our legs here, okay? You know, just you're just pulling our legs, okay? Uh, I know of my friend. So my friend has known that to use Power BI for the past three years, and he still doesn't have a job in tech. So what are you saying? Okay, what are you saying? All right. So that's why what you're thinking at the moment. But that's because there are other things needed. Power BI is needed, of course. But there are other things, which we would get into. Okay, so uh, just a moment, guys. I think uh, uh, sure you can see my screen. All right, great. So now, who is a data analyst? For you to use Power BI, you cannot just mention that, oh, uh, so I know Power BI and I want to get a job. Yes, you know Power BI, but Power BI is just one of the tools needed. For you to actually get that job, for you to actually be able to, you know, come from a place of a professional, you need to have other skills. Power BI is used by, uh, by four main career paths. We have the data analyst, we have the business analyst, we have the HR analyst, and we have the financial analyst. Business, data, HR, and financial analyst. These four career paths utilizes Power BI in different ways. What does this career path mean? What do they do? On my screen at the moment, you can see who is a data analyst. What does being a data analyst entail? How can you use Power BI as a data analyst? To get that job, of course, not because you want to claim you're a data analyst. Oh, so uh, you, you say you're a data analyst, but there's no job. So that's that's not what we do here, okay? So you're a data analyst with a job, okay? So how, how do you go about that? Firstly, who is a data analyst? From what we've done so far, you can infer. A data analyst is someone that is responsible for helping a company make decision based on data. You are a decision maker, a decision provider, I guess, a solution provider, a problem solver. But all of those things I just mentioned, they're not done from you just claiming, oh, I think we should do this, I think we should do this. No one wants to know what you think. People want to know what the data says. So because you are able to analyze the data, you will be able to go ahead and provide solutions as a data analyst. A data analyst is someone that can speak with data. A data analyst is someone that provides solutions to an organization, again, not based on opinion, but based on data. A data analyst is responsible for analyzing and interpreting data to generate insights and support data-driven decision-making. Data analytics is based on two things. The first is you have the descriptive analytics and the diagnostic analytics, talking about what's happened and why did it happen? The what happened is your descriptive analytics. What happened? You have a business. Okay, let's not even say business. Okay, so we are, we are familiar with the business ideology. Okay, let's say, okay, let, let's, give, let's give an example. So let's say you make pancakes. 
And there's this notion that says that the first pancake you fry, it's usually bad. I don't know if we know about that. Okay, but there's this, I, so I, I don't know if you know, if you know about that. So if you do, I, I don't know, but but there's this notion out there. It says that when you are trying to make pancakes, okay, and the first pancake you fry is usually bad. Now, let's say a day comes and you go ahead to fry your pancakes. The first pancake you fry is good. You would want to know, well, how did I actually make that pancake, the first one, to be good? How? First of all, what happened? Oh, the pancake was good. Second, how? Why? Why was it good? Did I do something different? Was it that I added, you know, a little more sugar? Uh, you know, is the flour was the flour just on point? Was it smooth? You know, did I place enough oil on the pan? You know, what what did I do right? Of course, from the analogy I just gave, you might be thinking. So I think Isosa likes food, and you're not far from the truth. Okay, <laughs> okay. So yeah, so. Being a data analyst, you are able to help organization determine, oh, what happened? So this year, how much did we make in sales? Oh, we made 5 million, we made 6 million. Now, why did we make that amount of money? And this can be gotten with data. Descriptive analytics and diagnostic analytics. We have the business analyst. Who is a business analyst? A business analyst also analyzes data. But a business analyst is different from a data analyst. A data analyst is more tutored to us analyzing data to provide problem-solving um, decisions, problem-solving insights, and help the organization uh, make data-driven decisions. That's what data analysis is, uh, is um, tutored to us. The business analyst also analyzes data. But the business analyst analyzes data to identify bottlenecks within the organization processes. The business analyst analyzes data to identify how to improve and provide solutions to business challenges. The business analyst utilizes Power BI to be able to determine, to be able to tell that, oh, at the moment, it seems that the reason why we are not able to go ahead with this project, that the reason why we are not able to go ahead to build the application that we wanted to build within, within the organization is because of this particular bottleneck within the process that I identified with taking a look at the data. A business analyst is still told to us stakeholders, documentation, fixing business problems, taking an organization from where they are to where they want to be. Who is a financial analyst? A financial analyst is someone that analyzes data too. They all work with Power BI, we've established that already. Okay, but a financial analyst is a data analyst that analyzes financial data. A financial analyst is someone that is tutored to us company finances. How can the company make more money? What should we invest in? Should we invest in this or should we invest in that? If we go ahead to launch a good a product in the market, what is the market looking like? What is the financial situation looking like? Are we expecting to make a lot of money or not? A financial analyst goes ahead to forecast financial trends using data, but focused on financial data. HR analyst. HR analyst is a data analyst, but focuses on people data. HR analyst is a person that analyzes data to help to improve organization HR policies and strategies to help to ensure that you have fantastic talent acquisition, fantastic talent retention, and less attrition. An HR analyst is an HR professional that can analyze data. All of these things I've mentioned, the business analyst, the data analyst, the financial analyst, the um, HR analyst, all of those, each and every one of those parts, one thing is similar. One thing is, you know, you can, there are some tools that you can find um, in each and every one of those career paths. We already know that's Power BI. Of course, that's number one. 
each and every one of these different uh, professionals utilize Power BI. But there are other things. There are other things that you need to be a business analyst, to be an HR, uh, HR analyst, a financial analyst, or a data analyst. There are other things you need. For a business analyst, you need to understand your process mapping. You need to be able to carry out your project initiation planning. Because like I mentioned, a business analyst is still tilted towards business data. That is what business analysis is uh, not, um, sorry, a business analyst is tilted towards business processes. That is what business analysis is all about. Identifying bottlenecks, helping to serve as the middleman between the non-technical stakeholders and the technical stakeholders. Helping, and, uh, helping to ensure that a business actually does go ahead to get what they stated they wanted to get done, be done. An organization wants to go ahead to put, to um, build an application. What does the CEO want? What does the um uh what does the developer know about the application? Let's say the organization wants to build an application that's go um uh, that customers can go ahead to purchase items, you know, from the from the application, like your your standard e-commerce application, something like that. Okay. Now, now the developer, which is the technical stakeholder now. The developer, which is the technical stakeholder, knows that, oh, I want to build an application that uh, customers will be able to use to purchase items from the organization. But that is not enough information. The technical stakeholder, the developer now, still needs some more information from the CEO, from the CFO, from all of the Cs, you know, the CEO, the CFO, the CGO, the CDO, you know, any C you can think about in an organization. Okay, they are part of the non-technical stakeholders. Okay, so... It still needs some more information, such as, all right, what kind of payment platform should be used? So we want, we want, uh, what, how, uh, how should the customers go ahead to pay? Oh, do you want the application to shout? Oh, um, then, you know, as soon as you just go ahead to make payment, the application should shout. Oh, you've made payment. Congratulations. You know, do you do, should the application dance? As soon as you make payment, the application will just start dancing. It might sound funny, but these are things that should be stated. So there are nitty gritties that the CEO has in mind. There are nitty gritties that the non-technical stakeholders have in mind that should be embedded in, in that application that the technical stakeholder would need to do. The business analyst is in charge of ensuring that all of the things that these um, people want is done by this guy. What I just explained can be termed requirements gathering. A business analyst needs to gather requirements. A business analyst needs to carry out elicitation. That's the reason why in the business analysis program here at Analytics, you are going to be learning about your uh, requirement fundamentals and then your project initiation planning. You begin with your Excel, your Power BI and your SQL because you need data analytics tools to be able to carry out your role as a business analyst. You need to know how to use these tools to analyze data to build reports, just like we've done with you know in the last couple of minutes. You then next you learn about your process mapping. How can you map our processes? How can you identify bottlenecks within an organization in you know the company's processes? Or this is the way we do things at the moment. Can we do things in a better way? You go ahead to map out your processes using your Lucid chart and your draw.io which you'll be taught, of course, which you should know, all right? And then you have your project initiation planning, your agile and scrum for projects, your software development lifecycle for when you're actually building an application, a software within the organization. You have your requirement fundamentals, your elicitation, okay? Your stakeholder analysis and engagement, and of course, ChatGPT for business analysis. Because we are currently in the day and age of what? We are currently in the day and age of AI. And so you want to ensure that you know how to use AI to help you in your business, um, um, to help you in your business, all right, in whatever, in your role, basically, okay? So using AI to get things done more efficiently. All of those things are what you need to become a business analyst, okay? And for the data analyst, the data analyst, the financial analyst, and the HR analyst, each and every one of those career paths, they all analyze data. They are all data analysts, but there's a difference. The data analyst is more focused on general business data. General business data. 
using skills such as your problem solving, you know, you need you need to be able to solve problems for if you want to be a data analyst. Okay, your problem solving, your Excel, your you know, Excel for your analytics. So you need to learn how to use Excel to build your dashboard, your reports to analyze your data, your SQL to interact with databases, your Power BI, your Tableau for data analysis. All right, your data storytelling for you to be able to give up, you know, give presentation, communicate insights efficiently and effectively to the different stakeholders, your chat GPT for analytics, and also your Microsoft Fabrics for analytics. Each and every one of those things are needed for a data analyst. Like I said, data analyst is more focused on general business data. And then we have the financial analyst. The financial analyst also needs to know how to solve problems. Okay? The financial analyst also knows, needs to know how to use Excel, also needs to know how to use Power BI and your SQL. But because financial analysis or financial analytics rather is more tilted towards financial data, that is why you now need your accounting fundamentals. You need to understand, oh, this is what accounting is all about because you are delving into the financial sector, into the financial um, industry, the finance industry rather. All right. You need to know about your financial analysis, your financial modeling. Can you build financial models as a financial analyst? If you can't build financial models, there's a financial analyst that you are not a financial analyst sorry okay <laughs> but yeah that's something you also need you need to be able to carry out your valuation your sensitivity and scenario analysis and of course your chat gpt for analytics and for the hr analyst you also need your problem solving you need your excel you need to be able to use excel or power bi your sql for analyzing data for communicating with databases and because hr is tilted towards people ensuring that Employees within an organization are more, are, you know, perfectly managed to ensure, um, you know, like I mentioned, reduced attrition rates, uh, fantastic talent acquisition, and fantastic talent retention. You need to understand HR analytics and performance evaluation, HR metrics and life cycle, your HR analysis and dashboarding, collaboration and report automation, build Building your case and creating action. Also, oh, now I've gone ahead to analyze the people data. I've seen that, oh, we have an issue in our HR policy at this particular point. How do you present this to the management to say, oh, I noticed that we have an issue in our HR policy at the moment. How do you present that to ensure that you have a solid case and that your suggestion is implemented? Building your case and creating action. All right, so that's what a data analyst, a financial analyst, and HR analyst, um, uh, um, analyst do. Business analysts tutor towards business processes. Data analysts, general business data. Financial analyst, financial data. HR analyst, HR data. These are fantastic career paths for you to get into. But why should you get into this career path? Because, yeah, okay, so it's good. All right, so I want to be a data analyst. I want to be this. I want to be that. But why should I? Why should I take out the time to actually go ahead to learn the skills and get a job? Why? Simple. Number one. There are a lot of opportunities. If you do go ahead to learn the skills, if you do go ahead to, of course, you know, you learn the skills of uh, business analyst, data analyst, financial analyst, HR analyst. You go ahead to acquire the skills. You are sure of getting a job. I repeat, you are sure of getting a job if you do the right things, of course. And the reason for this is that the World Economic Forum, they've talked about, um, yes, yes, business analyst, um, uh, um, a business analyst, that's also part of it. Okay, so I mentioned the business analyst, the HR anal um, analyst, financial and the data analyst, okay? Each and every one of those roles, they've been identified within the World Economic Forum. The World Economic Forum um, released a report, and the report contained different um, different job roles that are only going to increase with time in terms of opportunities. Just this year, France released a report, all right, that they currently have a shortage. Note, I said what? Shortage. I did not say that they mentioned that they have a lot of people in the role or that the number of roles they have, the number of opportunities, and that the number of people they have is just, you know, it's fantastic, it's equal. No, that they have a shortage in the number of individuals available for tech roles. And some of the tech roles listed where all of those roles I just mentioned, you know, um, taking a look at the data sphere. And 
the World Economic Forum also mentioned something similar, like I said, that the business intelligence analyst, of course, which is the business analyst, and you have the data analyst and scientists. The data analyst and scientists, it includes each and every one of the, you know, the financial analysts, the HR analysts, each and every one of those um, um those career paths, okay? As uh, uh, it's a generalization, all right? And if you scroll down, you'd also see some other career paths. You're going to see, um, so this is, you, you can take a look at the full report once you get access to the slide, just click on this. When you scroll down, they're also going to see uh, those, you know, experience in finance. So you're going to see uh, financial analytics, all right? It's also at the bottom, all right? It was stated as, uh, you know, for if you are able to, if you can actually carry out financial modeling, because many organizations now need someone that can go out ahead to build financial models all right so data analysts and scientists contain all of those roles that we've been talking about so far and of course you have the business intelligence analysts these roles are only going to increase in terms of opportunities only as the years go by there are lots of opportunities right now it's only going to go but that might not be enough to convince you so you just told me that there are lots of opportunities that's what everyone says but you're saying like, oh, if I just go ahead to get the role now, I just go ahead to learn the skills now, I'll just get a job. How do you expect me to believe you, Aisha, sir? That's what you might be thinking. So Aisha, sir, how do you expect, I thought you just mentioned we are friends. At the start of the session, you talked about the fact that we are friends. So how do you, why, why, why are you just, uh, how do you want, uh, should, how do you want me to believe? Because I've heard about this, you know, so many times. People have said this. People have said this. Why should, why should I take your word for it? That I would get a job. Why? Don't take my word for it. I repeat, don't take my word for it. Instead, listen to the numerous individuals that have been able to help transition into the tech space. It always seems impossible until it is done it's one of the mantras that we that we um you know that we always talk about yeah at, at analytics all right we've been able to help over 2000 individuals transition from the classroom into their text into their first world in tech don't listen to me say it's possible listen to them say it's possible we have individuals that have been able to successfully transition from the classroom into their job, into um uh, getting a job in tech. You know, so we have um uh, data analyst. As you can see, we have uh, Tony. We have Benga. So Benga is in Poland, all right. Benga was was uh, did not was out of a job for two years, but after going through the data analytics program, Benga was able to get a job as a business data analyst in Poland. We have Tosi. Tosi was able to get a job as a fraud analyst in the UK after completing the data analytics program with us. We have Oluwa Damlawe, a lot and lot and lot of testimonials. All right. So these are some of the success stories. Of course, once you get the slides, please go through all of these things. Listen to this guy speak. Okay. Like I said, don't take my word for it, but rather listen to the people that have been in your shoes previously and that have been able to get these things done. Listen to them instead. So, you know, I'm not just spitting fables. Okay, so this is Muidin, of course. Muidin was able to get a job remotely. So, Muidin currently works in the, um, currently works from Nigeria. So, Muidin is in Nigeria, but works for, uh, uh, works for a company in the UK, works for BPX in the UK, two months after completing our data analysis program. I am not the one saying this. Muidin is the one saying this. Here's the link. Go ahead and listen. Okay, and we have those within the business analysis um uh, analysis sphere as well. We have Abigail that was able to get a job with the government of Alberta in Canada. Okay, after completing our business analysis program, we have Ramat, we have Olumide, um Olamide, sorry, we have FA, each and every one of these people. Listen to them talk about how they were able to make that switch. Okay, and of course, we have those within uh sorry. Okay, and of course we have those within the financial um, and, um analytics program. Okay, we have we have Grace, we have Akintayo. Akintayo was able to get a job as a CFO, that's a chief financial officer in Nigeria after completing a financial analytics program. Okay, Chicken landed a job as a financial analyst in the UK after completing our financial analytics program. So we prepped Chicken for the interview to enable him get the job. So after he got the job, he reached out to us. We booked an interview prep session with him, whereby if um, he, um, 
a professional, you know, was on the call with him and then took him through what he should be expecting during the interview and how he can ace the interview. And of course, Ch Chika is a success story today. And we also have for HR analytics, we have Victor, we have Sonia, we have Olajide, we have Maureen. Listen to all of these guys. These guys have been able to make that switch. You can too. Okay, and we you can also take it, you know, watch some of the sessions that, um, that we had when we called these guys in. So we called this, you know, to talk to to uh people on the call to tell them, oh, this was how I was able to make the switch. Oh, this was what I did right. Oh, this is what I did. And this is how you can also be like me. How I secured a job after training with analytics. So the link to watch this, this sessions over, yes, so just click on these and please go through them and you be amazed, trust me. Okay. Again, you're still not convinced. You're wondering. So, okay, great. So I can get a job. There are people that have gotten jobs. Great, I should say. Oh, fantastic. It's fine. But now that you've said this, I have five people. Okay, I have five friends. Oh, just just yesterday. Five people told me they were transitioning into data analytics. Five people told me they were transitioning into uh, into uh, business analysis. For each and every day, I get five extra persons telling me that they are transitioning, just transitioning. So, and but they have, they have still not gotten a job. So I get that there are some persons getting jobs, but I know people that are not getting the job. So how what 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 would you say would and would make me be part of the people that are successful are not, you know, like the others. Because everyone wants to make money. And getting into tech is one sure way of doing that. How, what would make me successful? What would make me be like those, you know, be part of those testimonials that you've shared? And not like the others, like my friend, Kunle. Kunle that mentioned that, you know, he's, um, he, he, Kunle mentioned he got into tech five years ago, but he still does not have a job. Okay, so many of us we have that Kunle, we have that friend Kunle. Okay, <laughs> so he still does not have a job. Okay, so he mentioned he knows how you know he's a data analyst. He went ahead to learn how to use Excel, how to use those skills, but he still does not have a job in tech. How would I know end up as? Why won't I end up as Kunle? That's because of the TV layered approach. How you've been uh, structured? What? would separate you from the competition. Over here at Analytics, we've understood, we've, we, we know what works. Over the years, we've seen what, what works, we know what works, and we stick to what works. And we know that for you to get a job, it's not just about you knowing how to use Power BI. Yes, Power BI can get you that job, but it's more than just you knowing how to use Power BI. You need the other 50%. The first 50% being the technical skills. You know how to use Excel. You know how to use Power BI. You know what, how, how to you know, carry your financial modeling. How to, um, you understanding HR analytics. You being able to map out processes. You need that for you to do the job. You know the technical skills. But you need the other 50%, which is the employability skills. It's one thing for you to have skills. It's another for the recruiter to know you have the skills. It's one thing for you to be able to do something. It's another for me to know you can do that thing. It's one thing for you to be able to do the job. It's another for you to convince the recruiter that you can do the job. That's why we have the TV layered approach. Level one, level two, and level three. Level one contains a series of things that we've put in place to ensure that you are not just equipped with the first with the first fifty percent, but you also have the other fifty percent, so you get the job. And I'm talking about the CV review session. The CV review session is there to ensure that your CV gets to the recruiter. Many people go ahead to register to uh, apply for jobs. Sorry, many people go ahead to apply for jobs. The CV, the recruiter does not even see the CV. Like, like whoever is going to interview you, does it, the person does not even see the CV. Why? There's this 
machine, there's a system called, you know, the ATS, the Applicant Tracking System. Many individuals are sending their CV, applying for a job. It does not even pass. Like the, like the system just sees the CV from, a, from ways, you know, like from, from yards and yards ahead and just, you know, puts it in the bin. So the individual is waiting. Oh, wow, I just applied for this job. I know I'm, you know, I'm qualified. And so I'm going to wait for the next week or for the next two weeks. And I'm sure I'm going to get uh, emails, you know, calling for me for an interview. And you wait and wait and wait. And the person does not even get... Unfortunately, no, unfortunately. So whereby you just get an email and then, you know, the first line says, unfortunately, or the first line says, thank you very much. You know, they say, thank you very much. Or you see, unfortunately, or you see, um, we were glad to have you in, you know, things like that. So you, most times you don't even need to read the, the entire email. You, you already know what's the content. Okay. <laughs> so, so yeah. So many people, they don't even get that because the recruiter does not over, is, the recruiter did not, did not even see your CV. It was it was at the the first stage. It didn't even it, it, it didn't even move anywhere at all. Like the the system just said, oh no, this this person is not qualified. The CV review session is meant to ensure that you are able to craft a well compelling CV, a CV that can pass an ATS system, but not just pass ATS because it's not just about oh so I you know, so um I know that this CV will pass the system. No, it's not just about that, but that after it has gone, gone through the system, that when the recruiter now takes a look at the CV, because the ATS system will filter out, um, you know, CVs that it thinks are not uh, qualified for the role, and would just show the recruiter a few, maybe five, six, ten, you know, as the case may be, for, oh, I think these are a nice fit, okay? The CV review session is meant not just for you to have a CV that can pass the ATS test, but also that when a human sees the CV, when a recruiter sees the CV, reads through it, they want you for that job. The CV review session would ensure that you are shown how to make your experience not to be a useless experience. Because many people are confused. Oh, but I don't have any experience uh, you know, in data analytics. And when you go ahead to apply for jobs, you see, oh, two years experience, five years experience, 50 years experience. Okay. And I don't have that experience. So how do I now go about to do that? The CV review session would ensure that it will show you how to craft your current experience, whatever it is you are doing, it doesn't matter, to become either a business analysis experience, data analytics, HR analytics, or financial analytics experience, all embedded in the CV review session. You also have the LinkedIn optimization session. The LinkedIn optimization session is meant to help you ensure that you have a well-optimized LinkedIn profile. Very, very crucial. The LinkedIn is the Facebook of professionals. And it's a place where there are so many recruiters that are looking to get people for a certain job role. I, myself, have recruited from LinkedIn numerous times. Numerous times times i go on linkedin and i search for an individual i search for a job role not a specific individual i just search for a job role so let's say i'm looking to hire uh let's say i'm looking to hire a data analyst now so just go in there and just type in data analyst and then you see different profiles and then i took a look at the profiles take a look at you know what the profile contains if it's well optimized if it contains highlights of the individual's work and for those that i think are good enough for the role i go ahead and i reach out to them to send in a cv to me so this is this is you getting called to send a CV. Like you don't even know there's a job opening. You don't you don't even know there's a job opening. But someone is telling you to send in a CV. That can only be possible with a well-optimized LinkedIn profile. All right. So your LinkedIn needs to be optimized if you're interested in freelancing. You are interested in up on up on up work. You want to you want to detect your work hours. You want to decide, oh, I feel like working today, or I don't feel like working, or I want to work two to five, I want to work five to six. You want to go into up work. The up work optimization session will take you through how you can ensure that you optimize your up work profile, not just optimizing the up work profile, but ensuring that you do land on those gigs because up work can be a bit tricky. You go ahead, you send a proposal. The proposal is not even viewed. A proposal that is not viewed, how does it, how is it even going to be accepted? For, how do you even get the interview? 
Upwork uses a currency system. People are confused. Oh, should I go ahead to boost my proposals to send in more up, uh, more, to use to spend more connects? Does that work? If I um, spend more connects, and do I have a chance of you know getting the job? All of these things. That's what the Upwork optimization session will cover to ensure that you do become a successful freelancer. You have navigating the job market. The, the, um, the navigating the job market, the session is geared to us and showing that you know how to navigate the job market, the job ecosystem in your location. Because many of us, many people, so, so you know, you move to another country. So maybe you're in Canada, you're in Poland, you're in France, you know, you're in Australia, you're in the UK, you're in the US, you're in South Africa, you know, wherever you are. Okay, and you so you just move there and you are confused as to how to navigate the job market. You don't know, or oh, should I apply for jobs in the morning or should I apply for jobs in the evening? Okay, so maybe something as simple as that would get you the job. Okay, so you're confused. Oh, what so what job boards should I go ahead to look at for within my location? Navigating the job market. So you get to speak with professionals that have done the things, succeeded. They get to tell you what they did that made them succeed. So you go ahead to do those things and you succeed. And they get to also tell you what they did that made them, you know, that uh, hindered them from succeeding. Oh, so this was what I was doing earlier and it did not work. So you know what does not work and that you do not do what does not work, thereby multiplying your success rate. Job and interview preparation. You've gotten the job, or rather, you've gotten an interview. You have you have a fantastic CV, your LinkedIn is optimized, you can navigate the job market. You've gotten the interview. That is not where it ends. How do you ensure you ace that interview? How do you ensure you ace the interview? Because many people, they don't have an issue with their CV. Oh, their CV is fantastic. I get many, you know, many mails. So people send me mails. Oh, I have an issue. Okay, so my issue is not with, uh, with it's not with my CV. So I have a fantastic CV. But I notice that anytime I go for an interview, that's where it ends. I never, I'm never called back. I just, I don't know if there's an issue. I, they mess everything up during the interview um stage. That's the reason why we have the job and interview preparation session. The job and interview preparation session is meant to guide you, you, you know, you, um, uh, to guide you and to prepare you for your interview, to ensure that you ace the interview and that you do get the job. Okay, and when you actually do go ahead to get a job, organizations now want reference letters. Okay, they want to know, are you who you say you are? So you claim that you help this organization make an, um, an a thousand percent increase in revenue. So you are in the interview and you're like, oh, so in my last organization, I was able to help them change the entire business. Okay. Within five days of me joining, just five days, the first five days I joined the organization, I was able to help them transform the entire business. All right. And increase revenue by 5,000% just within the first five days of me joining the organization. All right. So people say that during the interview, okay. Sent within the first five days. Okay. So as excited, I want to employ you. I want I want you to work with me. Okay. But they would want an assurance. They want someone to back you up. Are you really who you say you are? The things that you mentioned you've been able to do, did you really do them? And that's why we have the recommendation and reference letter. They go ahead to request for reference letters from your previous organization. And yeah, at Analytics, as long as you are a participant or an alumni with us, you are sure of getting a fantastic reference letter from us. That's all for level one. Level two, we have the mentorship session. The mentorship session occurs weekly. Every week, you get to be mentored. You get to be shown, oh, these are the new things in the industry. These are the new ways for you to get a job. Oh, 
sometimes you go ahead to apply, you apply, you apply for jobs and you keep getting rejections, rejections, rejections. And you might feel like, oh, so you know what? I don't think this is for me. Why don't I give up? You need someone that will pet you, you know, you know, guide you and tell you that, oh, don't worry. Uh, this occurs even to the best of us. It's normal. Rejections is normal. All right? so for you to keep on applying, you need someone to mentor you. That's what the weekly material session is all about. Talking about new trends in the industry, how you can succeed, different ways that you can succeed and ensure that you do land the job. And on the job support. So you've gotten the job, okay? But you're given a task that you're not really clear about. You can always reach out to us and we'll guide you on what you need to do. Also, you know, just do this, do this, do this and do that, okay? And you'll get it done. And of course, you go back to work Work, you do all of the things, you know, follow the guides that we give you, get the work done and blow their minds. Figuratively, of course, not literally. <laughs> okay. And we also promise you one job interview. We guarantee you one job interview one month after completing your training program with us. It's a promise from us to you. As long as you do all of the things that we require of you, you know, you follow all the instruction, you attend classes, you know, you do all of the things we tell you to do. We got, we are guaranteeing one job interview, all right, one month after completing the training pro um, program with us. This is our promise to you, to ensure that you do land that job. How would you learn? So you go right ahead to register for the program. What does the classroom look like? Okay, so I'm going to take you through what a classroom looks like. Okay, so this is what the classroom looks like. So I'm going to go to, let's say, uh, let's say the, okay, so let's say data analytics, for instance. So I'm going to select data analytics and let's see what the data analytics uh, classroom looks like. So I'll come over to the class work. Okay, so uh, a lot of sessions, lots and lots of sessions. Okay, just a moment. Okay, Let's scroll down. All right, so once you join the classroom, of course, once you register, you're going to be sent links. You know, um, you'll be guided on how to uh, be a part of all of these. Okay, the first thing you see here is that you have the onboarding material. So you get to see your welcome kit. You have a video that shows you how you can actually navigate um the uh the Google classroom. And then you have installation videos, videos that contain how you can go about installing each and every one of the applications that you are going to be using during the program. And then you have your onboarding session telling you what to expect from the program and ensuring that you are ready and fantastic and that you're ready for your classes. The first class as a data analyst, okay, the first class in the data analytics program is the problem solving class. Because we've been able to establish earlier that for you to be a data analyst, for you to be a financial analyst, for you to be a nature analyst, you need to know how to solve problems. And that's what the problem solving class contains. All right, so you get to learn the different problem solving um, principles. You have different ways to solve um, to solve problems. You get to take a look at the Crips DM framework, the 80-20 principle, the, uh, you know, the uh, McKenzie, you know, different um, ways that you can actually solve problems as a data analyst, all right? And if you do miss a class, so let's say you miss a class and that you, uh, you, you, uh, maybe due to an emergency or something, each and every one of the sessions are fully recorded. Every class is recorded. Every session is recorded. So you can come over to the classroom and over here, you see, you have the class recording and then you have the class. So you can click on this and then get to watch what the class was all about. So over when you are not in class, you are sure of not missing the team. Okay, and then you have your Excel Watch Me Do It videos, okay, videos that will be sent on Sunday. So you get to have, uh, it's a blended learning approach. You get to have live classes on Saturdays, whereby you are speaking with a facilitator, you are working on teams, you are, you know, working on real life case studies, um, you know, in class. And then on Sunday, you get to be sent um, bit size Watch Me Do It videos that would introduce you to a, a concept that you will be working on in the next class. Okay, so you are introduced, oh, this is what we're going to be doing in the next class. And in the next class, you now work on case studies based on what you saw on those videos with or uh, with an experienced facilitator, of course. And over here, you see your MS Excel class one, and then you can see the class material. Okay, so this is the slide. 
Okay, so you can click on that and then uh, just a moment. All right. Okay, so this this is uh, this is what the slide um, looks like. Okay, so you can see you have your case. You have this uh, the different case studies. So it says you have been hired as a data analyst in one of the largest medical center in North America with about ten thousand staff. And um, the this is the this is your um, your tax. So your tax is to highlight those branches that fall below the ten percent threshold to make them easier to spot before for the analysis. So you have different cases. So for each and every one of the classes. You are going to be serving, you are going to be acting as a data analyst, working on real life problems, problems that those our facilitators have been able to go through because, of course, they are well experienced professionals. That's, so you work on those problems, thereby gaining experience as a data analyst, in as a data analyst in training. So you are learning, you are working on problems that you would actually work on while on the job, and you are learning while doing that as well. It's a win win, a win win system. All right. And of course, you also have the recording. So you have the drop-in session, the drop-in session sessions during the week. So you have a question for the facilitator. Uh, maybe there's something that's really not clear and you like to speak to the facilitator during the week. So the drop-in session is a session whereby you get to have a conversation with the facilitator. All you need, all you're doing is asking questions and of course, answers will be provided. Okay. And of course, you have your body mentorship session. You have your CV review, your classes, uh, your uh, your LinkedIn session, your weekly mentorship session. And if I scroll up all the way to the top, you can see a lot, a lot and lots of classes. You see your SQL classes, uh, your interview simulation. So we had a sim interview simulation whereby you get to join a session, uh, you, whereby a, a job post is sent across and people apply for the job, all right? That's different participants apply for the job and then some are selected and they get to join a session where you get to view and listen to an interview live. So yes, oh, so this is what an interview is really like. Oh, these are the way questions are asked. This is this, this is that. Okay, so that is a session. That's what the interview um, simulation is all about. All right. And if I scroll all the way to the top, okay. Uh, all right. So you can see you have the reference. So in case if you want to request for reference from us, so uh, over here you can see the details. All you need to request for to request for references from mm -hmm. us, and then also you have your uh, your uh, interview prep. Okay, so you have your CV templates. You have an interview prep session. You can book an interview prep session. So you've gotten an interview. You want to speak with a professional to be ready. So you are ready for that interview. You can click on this, and of course you get the link to uh to uh you know book an interview prep session based on the days that the professional would be available okay and what something else so this is uh this is the lms platform so you are also going to be introduced to the lms platform so once you become once you uh become a participant but also you are going to an account to be created for you in this platform now in this platform you get to take a look at your courses you know um like so like i mentioned it's a blended learning approach so you are learning, you have live classes and you have videos, okay? So any side you fall on, any side you fall into, you know you are learning, all right? So you are going to have access to this platform as long as you're a participant, an account would be created for you. And over here, so you can see the mentorship program. I talked about the weekly mentorship sessions. Now, these are different mentorship sessions that, uh, that, uh, uh, that the data... Uh, that, um, have been that's the different mentorship sessions on that data analytics. So when you do register, you're going to be in this in this session. So over here, you can take a look at some of the sessions that have actually occurred previously. So you have oh, I, I was able to ace my interviews. How many applications should you apply for to land an interview? So this was uh so Adesa actually took this. So um if so over here you can play. All right. So you can play and then, you know, you get to watch the, the uh, you know, this particular mentorship session and then others will be occurring week by week whereby you get to join the session live and then you get to interact with the professional that will be taking that mentorship session. And over here, you have the, you know, list of different sessions. In case maybe you missed one or two, you can always come back and, you know, view that. Okay, like I said, this, you're going to have access to the LMS platform as soon as you register. 
um, an account to be provided for you so you can navigate through all of these. Okay, yeah. So that's what the learning that's what the learning platform looks like. Now, and this course is going to begin the sixth of July, a couple of days from now. All right, that's when the next squad will begin for like, the business analysis, the data analysis, each and every one of our programs. Okay, the next squad will begin 6th of July. And for you to be a part of the program, for you to be a part of the program, what you need to do is you need to make the payment. Okay, so the, the fee to be a part of the business analysis, the data analytics, the HR analytics, or the financial analytics program, okay, is 625 pounds all right that's the thing 625 pounds so if you are paying the naira that will be 900 thousand naira but we are currently running a discount all right we are currently running a discount for the first 20 persons to register for the program if you are among the first 20 persons to register for the program you get to pay the discounted amount which will be 500 pounds if you are paying in pounds, six hundred dollars. If you are paying in dollars, or seven hundred and twenty thousand naira. If you are paying in naira. Now this is only for the first twenty persons to register. Only for the first twenty persons to register. Okay. So if you are not part of the discount, unfortunately, you would have to pay make the full payment. So you want to ensure that you make payments as soon as possible to ensure that you do key into the discount. Now if you don't have the full discount amount. The full discounted amount. If you don't have that, you can also split payments into two different installments. So you have the first installment and the second installment. For the first installment, you can make a payment of two hundred and fifty pounds. Okay, and then that's for you to get um uh, for you to be registered into the program. So once you make the first installment, you'll be sent your welcome kit, sent all you need for you to be a part of the program. And then one month into the program, a month into the program, that'll be the end of July. You get to make the second installment the balance of 850 pounds. And if you're paying the error, your first installment will be 500,000 error, and then your second installment will be 220,000 error. All right. So that's what that's what you um you know you can do for for um uh, for that you know to split to split the payments into two if you are unable to actually make that full um you know that full uh commitment. Okay. Now. This is what the payment platform looks like. So I'm going to go over there. I'm going to show you what that looks like uh, very soon. So this is what the payment platform looks like. My colleague has been doing, uh, I've been sending the, the payments links to the chat box. And uh, please, you can click on that link. Once you click on the link, it will take you over to the 10 Analytics and Roman Center. And over here, you can see chat with 10 Analytics. So if you, have, if you have any issues, you would like to reach out to us, you have any issues with payment, you can click on these to you know send us a message. And of course, someone is on ground to answer your questions and to take you through all, all that is needed. And you can also get access to all of our program brochures. So we currently offer eight programs here at Analytics. You can click on this to go through the different programs, you know, from data analytics down to Scrum Master, you know, your cybersecurity, data engineering, data science, all of that, all right. And over here, you have the uh, you have the price structure, and you can make a direct transfer. So if you are looking to make a direct transfer, make pay directly from your bank. You can, this is the Canadian account details, so you can you know pay using the Canadian account details, the British account details, or um we have the uh, uh the euro account details as well. We have the dollar account details, the Nigeria account details. So you want to make a direct transfer in Canada, you can use the Canadian account details. You want to make a direct transfer, you are in Britain, so you can use the British account details. You are in Europe, okay? So you can use the uh, Euro account details. You are uh, you want to make payments in, you are in the US, you want to make payments in dollars, so we have the account details for the dollar payments. You want to, you are in Nigeria, you want to make uh, payments in, um, uh, you want to make payments in Naira, you have the Nigerian account details. So we have something for you, okay? But what about if you, maybe you're in Ghana, for instance, and you know, you want to make payments, but of course, so, uh, and you, we don't have the Ghana account details, at, at least not yet, okay? So you can make payments using your card, and this also goes for everyone. So maybe you don't want to make a direct transfer. You can make payments using your card, so you can scroll down, and you see you have card stroke online payments. And then you get to select the program you're looking to register for. In this case, let's say I want to register for the data analytics program. So I can go ahead and click on data analytics. Okay, so I click on data analytics, and then that's it's pops up so this is going to go ahead to load 
All right. And then, um, yeah, so I can go ahead to insert my price. So currently you see this is in Naira and that's because I'm currently in Nigeria. Okay. So wherever you're located, it's going to take the currency of your location. Okay. So let's say I want to make the first installment. I want to make payment for the first installment. I can go ahead and insert, let's say 500,000. Okay. So I go ahead and insert 500,000. And then I'm now going to go ahead and click on reserve a seat. All right. So I click on reserve a seat. And then over here, I insert my details, my email address, my phone number. Okay, so I'm just going to insert random numbers. Okay, so random numbers. And then I can go ahead to click on proceed. And then, uh, yeah, so I click on proceed and then I get this pop-up. Then I can insert my card details and of course, click on pay. All right, so as soon as I do that, I'm going to get, um, as soon as I do that, I'm going to get a, a receipt. So a receipt will be sent to your email. And of course, if you made payments, you know, using the direct transfer, you would also get a receipt from your bank, of course. So you want to come back to this link and then come over to upload your receipt here. And then you click on upload your receipt here. And then you go ahead to upload your receipt and also fill in the form that um you would be giving. And then once you do that, you would get an email from us, you know, confirming your payments, everything, everything you need to be a part of the program and one other thing let's say you want to make payments you want to be sure you want you want to ensure you're part of the discount okay but you don't have the full discounted amount and you also don't have the full first payment at the moment but you want to make payment now to ensure that you don't end up making the full payment what you can do is that you can make a commitment so you can make you can make a payment. Let's say if you're paying in Naira, you can pay let's say two hundred thousand. Okay, maybe two hundred and fifty thousand, maybe uh, four hundred thousand. You know, to make a commitment to ensure that you key into your discount and that the discount slot is is reserved for you. And then after you've made the commitment, before the start of the program, before July fourth, so registration ends on the fourth of July. Before July 4th, you want to ensure you make the balance of the first installment. And in that case, if you do go ahead to make, uh, let's say you make a payment of uh, 300,000, you want to ensure that you pay the balance for the first installment of 200,000 before the start of the program. And then after you begin the program, one month into the program, you can then go ahead to make pay, um, you know, pay the second installment so that's something you can do to ensure that you key into the discount all right because you need to ensure you do that so very very quickly so you don't end up paying the full amount all right so there are lots of testimonials okay like once you get us to the slide go through all of this you know all of this listen to what these guys have to say follow us on our social media platform go on youtube listen to the amazing things that we've been doing and the amazing things that individuals have been able to do with our help of course and uh i'm sure you will be very, very convinced that it is possible to use Power BI to get your job. All right. Any question? Any question for me? Okay. So I'm going to go through the chat box. So um, thank you very much, everyone. So uh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much, everyone. So I can see a lot of comments coming in. And uh, um, uh, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad that... Uh, you that you are glad to listen to me okay i'm glad we had fun like i said tgif okay the fact that you joined this session today it just made your day a whole lot better <laughs> all right so flora has a question um how do we know we can pay the discounted amount i want to pay in their installment this evening okay so flora what you can do you go ahead to make payments go ahead to make payments as soon as you make payments you would receive a message from us so you you would be um when you are going um when you go ahead to make payments you would uh, receive a message from us if you do qualify for the discount or not all right but if you don't qualify for the discount you will be told as well but i'm sure you would qualify for the discount if you do go ahead to make payments right now so as soon as you make payments you'll be you'll be you'll be informed on that fact okay but for you to ensure that that is the case please you know make payments right now so um, we don't have um, so we don't have a different situation later on. But I see you on this race, Flora. I'm going to ask you to unmute so you can ask a question. Hello, thanks so much for the powerful webinar. I really yeah, appreciate. Thank you. Yeah. 
but Thank I you. still have yeah. like a little bit of doubt, you know. I was yeah. trying to find out how different is your program from the likes of maybe Quantum, you know, which is slightly cheaper. That, that's one of my concerns. Thanks. All right. All right. So um, I've gone through, uh, so I've been able to go through a lot of what we offer here at Analytics. And um, one of the things that I would mention, and I talked about this earlier, is that we know what works. And that is what we stick with. Okay, taking a look at the success that we've had in the industry over the last couple of years. So we've been in multiple publications, you know, taking a look at the different hackathons that we've hosted, taking a look at the numerous testimonials that we've been able to, uh, that, um, that uh, different participants have, you know, want to, uh, that different participants have sent across, willingly um, sent across, of course. You would see that we know what works. And like I mentioned in the session, don't listen to me. Don't take my word for it, okay? Go to the testimonials and listen to these people speak, people that have been in your shoes earlier, and that you would actually understand that we do, we know what works and that we follow with you. And that's just on the surface. But when you really go into the session, okay, when you really go into the program, so we actually, uh, we, I showed, you know, I showed, uh, we have a blended learning approach. So I showed you, I, I don't know if you saw that, but I showed the LMS platform whereby it's, you're going to get an account. So as soon as you register, an account will be created for you. Okay. Now the LMS platform contains videos that would teach you about the skills you need. You would also have live classes that would teach you the skills you need. So if you're a slow learner, it's fine. You have videos, you know, you, you can go, to, you can play the videos 0.5, you know, uh, 0 0.5 speed and all of that. And then if you're a fast learner, it's fine. Like any approach, you will be in class speaking with, you know, just like the way we are speaking at the moment. Okay. Working on real life case studies, case studies that have been worked on by these fast learners. Facilitators having the best of the best facilitators. Cases that have been worked on by them, problems, actual problems that have been solved in the industries. Those problems will be brought into class for you to work on. So while you are learning, you are actually learning from experience because you are working on problems that you would actually work on while in the class, while in the role. Sorry. Okay. So you work on those problems. You are you you work on those problems. You are learning. Okay, you learn in class, and then you also have that LMS platform that contains each and every one of um the, um the um you know bit size videos on the different skills that you need. So you know skills like so let's say you register for the data analysis program now. So you have your Excel, the Power BI, all of that. So you also get that there. So it's a blended learning approach, whatever you know, whatever works for you. And of course, uh, the numerous sessions that we offer, the numerous numerous sessions we offer. I showed you a glimpse of what the mentorship session looks like, a list of the you know multiple numerous sessions that we've had previously. So when you join the program, you are going to have access to past sessions. And then new sessions that, of course, is going to occur every week because that's something we offer, weekly mentorship sessions. There are, there are a, lot, a whole lot of things. We also have the job tracker, okay? That's one of the things to ensure that you do get a job, okay? So what we actually focus on here at Analytics is not you getting the skills. That is not, that's not our goal. The company's goal is to ensure that we lower the tech barrier and then get as many of the pay, uh, as many Africans and people of the black community into get landing a role in tech. That is our focus. So you getting the skills is not what we count as success. What we count as success is you getting the skills and landing a job. Okay. So I hope I answered your question, Flora. All right. So, um, so CCWC is asking, do you provide references for candidates? Yes, we provide references for candidates, okay? So, so we provide references for, for candidates. So our references are globally recognized. So we are currently, we are currently, uh, we are a registered Canadian company, okay? So once you get a reference from us, you know that, well, yeah. So, so, so yeah, so we, uh, we offer, we send references to each and every one of our, as long as you are, a, as long as you are a participant or an alumni with Tin Analytics, you are sure of getting a reference from us. Uh, thank you very much, Chidoze. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, any other question? Okay, uh, yes, yes, that works. That works, Stephen. Okay, so that works. 
that works. As long as that when when you do make payments and you are filling in the form, all right, send in paste the receipts of you know paste the receipts of the payments, of course, and then you fill in your name. Okay, so you fill in the name of whoever is registering for the course. Okay, it's because sometimes the name the person registering for the course the name um of the person registering for the course might be different from the name on the payment slip. If you know someone paid or something like that, okay. So you just want to ensure you get that done. Okay. Um, so someone is asking for those in Europe, can the payment be done three times? So the payment is actually two times. So you can make payments in you know two installments. But um, Samuel, I want you to send an email down to um send an email to Nene at analytics dot I also I'm going to send that email to you now. Send that email and we'll see if we can work something out for you. All right, so uh, fantastic. So my colleague that's uh, already, uh, you know, uh, sent, uh, uh, responded to that already. Okay, so you can just send a mail to us and we would uh, try to see, you know, see um, work out something for you. Okay, but what we usually go for is two installments. All right, uh, any other question? Okay, so I guess, all right, so Flora has another question. Okay, so uh, yes, go ahead, please. So sorry for bothering you. Please, I want <laughs> to fine. find yeah. out because the one I saw when you were narrating before was to make a transfer from your site, you know. So I may not be able to have the facility to do that, but can I send in a transfer from my bank internet banking platform to you guys and then forward the receipt or whatever to of course. you okay yeah Thank of course you. of course of course so if you need any help any assistance in you know going through the payments just send us a message and we'll take it up from there okay, okay? thanks so much i'm grateful yeah, of course of course my, my pleasure <laughs> okay all right so um so Lopa is asking, I study data analytics, but trying to dive into data engineering because I have not been able to get a job as a data analyst. What advice do you have? And when is the class for data engineering commencing? So the class for data engineering is going to commence July 6th for each and every one of the programs. So we're going to begin a new course on the 6th of July. Okay. And um, so you study data analytics, but you're trying to dive in. So if you have interest in data engineering, data engineering is a fantastic career path, a very fantastic career path. And um, the, the thing is that in data engineering, data engineering is, I would say, relatively new. I, I would not say it, it's not new. But what I mean by relatively new is that you would hardly find a program out there, a data engineering program out there that can, that is as detailed as what you'll be learning with all CRT analytics. Okay? A data engineering program is one to beat. Okay, so if you want to go ahead to register for the data engineering program, please do so to log by. And um, as long as that's what you're interested in, so data analytics, of course, you can also get tremendous success as a data analyst, just like you can, you know, also do as a data engineer. Just that you might, there are some things that you need to put in place for you to ensure you do get that job. Like I mentioned earlier, it's not just having the skills. There's a lot that goes on. There's the fifty the first fifty percent and the other fifty percent. And of course, when you register with us here at analytics you are sure of getting all you need and that you will get that job. All right, guys. So I'm going to take that as the last question. Thank you, everyone, for joining in today. I hope we had a fantastic time. I hope we had a nice Friday. TGIF, thank God it's Friday. And um, I'll see you guys when next I see you guys. Speak to you when next I speak to you. Until then... All right, till then, please ensure you eat, guys. Okay, food is good. <laughs> All right, and please register. TikTok says the clock. What you have to do, do quick, everyone. Cheers.